That looks cool. Oh! <laughs> Our species has gone through an arc of evolution leading up to this moment of artificial intelligence. There's been a stadial unfolding of our ability to maneuver other organisms and guide them in the direction that serves our desires and our survival interests. We've turned a blunt stone into a sharp stone, into the atom bomb, and into the iPhone. That took a long time, but a part of that evolutionary process over the last few hundred years has been powered by banking and industry, which have produced economic systems that quite naturally have been optimized to serve the desires, needs, and interests of those in banking and industry. Those goals led to a broad set of incentives for people. People could get jobs at prestigious companies like IBM. Or if you were creative and wanted to be an actor, you could end up on the big screen. These incentives have all been serving the same general finance, industry, and technology goals in one way or another. The landscape of desire and incentives, popularly known as the matrix, is one facet of an infinite golf ball of illusions created by the mind. And we call it the modern economy. From a microeconomic perspective, people have been competing against each other for opportunities. But from the macro perspective, people have been more like bees on the same team, collectively working together to advance the general power and ability of these banking, tech, and industry forces. Now we've advanced these industries to a point where we're quickly moving into a post-artificial intelligence world, where human beings are rendering themselves obsolete like the car did the horse and carriage. In this new reality, what incentives do we have? What else is there for us to reach for when the goals of banking, tech, and industry industry can be met by themselves and no longer need you. And so here begins the life of the post-economic person. We have an opportunity to set a new set of desires and goals for the post-economic person. A new landscape of incentives that are directed at achieving balance and holistic health within individuals and larger groups. There must be a powerful human move to counterbalance a powerful technological move. A part of that human move is first acknowledging that we have higher needs that go beyond satisfying our senses. That there's a lot more going on both in the soul and in the cosmos, and both have infinite mysteries to discover and share for the benefit of ourselves and all. There's enough people on this planet that understand that the economic extension of this illusion of Maya, what people call the matrix, has nothing else to offer the human soul. In a post-AI world, tech will fill the shoes that people once filled. So now we have an opportunity to choose our own paths and move past the outdated templates that have been pre-prescribed to us by the needs of that system. This gives us an opportunity to live into our highest potentials as individuals and as a species. Arthur Schopenhauer said that what makes a man happy is what he is and not what he has. All this economic evolution has been moving us towards a time where humanity as a whole is not concerned with what it has, but what it is. Economics was meant to be the means by which we would arrive at a civilization with enough leisure time for the higher faculties to flourish in as many people as possible. With a large portion of the population able to create uh, new ideas and creative solutions, we would have a healthy, auspicious, and more humane society. Economic evolution was always meant to simplify and secure our base needs. And so with the foundation of Maslow's hierarchy being met, our higher need for self-transcendence starts to turn on. At this phase, a new hunger starts to irritate the human condition. That hunger can only be satisfied by a form of sustenance, a form of nutrition, that is found outside of the identity of the self. We shed the skin of the self like a caterpillar sheds itself before the butterfly. And then like the butterfly, we activate a new lens of perception. A third eye opens up. Through this release of the self, through this release of the identity, we paradoxically gain a new kind of vision that helps us to become even more human, more creative, more contemplative, and more connected more aware of the infinite complexity of our organic cosmos, its interactions, and our soul's primary creative position within it. There's an infinity of beauty to learn from organic intelligence. It's the intelligence that's created everything around us. Stars, planets, life itself, the ability to experience love, the touch of salt, beauty, meaning, 
different dimensions of reality. It's that intelligence that's made artificial intelligence too. Artificial intelligence is a thimble of water in an ocean of organic intelligence. The intelligence you experience when you're in deep nature for a year, meditation or tripping. Those moments of still clarity and perspective reveal cosmic laws and truths that fortify us against our quickly evolving existential situation. Speaking of that quickly evolving existential situation, now that the era of artificial intelligence is here, we have some opportunities and choices to make that'll be a part of defining what directions we get to go down. These choices are made by you and me, not the abstraction that we call society. In this whole scene, there's just you, me, and a cup of green tea. One of those potential paths is to continue down the road that the information age has paved for us. We've already seen what outsourcing our lives technology has done to the human soul so far. There's more deaths by suicide than all armed conflicts and natural disasters combined. There's more existential despair and antidepressants being prescribed than at any other point in history. Considering artificial intelligence is an exponential doubling down on that very same direction, what outcomes do you sense we'll be living with? Leave your thoughts in the comments. The solutions to the different stages of existential problems for human beings do not lie in increased comfort, but in increased consciousness. And there's a lot of people who already understand this. Which leads us down another road we could go, which is the road of the great simplification, a return to nature. This direction is a very strong pendulum swing in the opposite direction. That would be pretty difficult because of the degree to which we've acclimated ourselves to modern techno culture. It would also negate some of the benefits and beauty that we've developed as a consequence of industrialization. There is a baby in all of that oily bathwater. This great simplification direction is already the direction that our civilization is taking. Like the smaller Germanic tribes that developed after the fall of the Roman Empire. If it doesn't quite feel like that's happening to you, it's because you're still living well within the walls of Rome. Now, if we want to return to a more natural state of being, like all natural things, this needs to be done in phases. Too quick of a return to nature is a return to some idealized form of Eden that perhaps never existed in the same way that it always gets romanticized. So this leads us to think about the option of a Wu way, a way of balance, a middle road between the benefits of technology and the depth of nature. This balance is what every philosophy sees as the way, because they're all tapping into the same cosmic laws that filter throughout all of existence. The laws that form all life here on Earth are only possible because of the laws of balance. Our planet sits in a Goldilocks zone, far enough away from the sun so we don't burn to a crisp, and close enough so we don't freeze in cosmic darkness. We're alive, breathing, conscious, and able to see each other right now only because of that balance. The plane we call physical reality is a plane of duality, a plane of good and evil, both light and dark, it's balanced. This way of balance seems to be the way of nature. Moving forward in the artificial intelligence world, it's a way for us to maintain our humanity and avoid falling so deeply in love with our creations that we forget ourselves. In states of higher consciousness, I've interacted with aliens, or what seem like aliens, but really they're just future us, they're future people, reaching back across time. They've gone so far down the artificial intelligence timeline that they've lost their connection to the soul, and they're strongly recommending that we make free will choices in the direction of more organic timelines, more organic futures. Those organic futures are set by the organicness of the steps that we take today. Those organic futures where we live with the intelligent rhythms of the planet and greater cosmos. It's a big clockwork. They're already living where this artificial intelligence direction inevitably goes. They have all the intelligence and knowledge of the most powerful supercomputer that we couldn't even begin to imagine. But with every power comes its opposite. So they also have that supercomputer's lack of heart. They know absolutely everything rationally in data form, but they know absolutely nothing of meaning, sensation, and love. They don't know the value of the experiential. They know how to travel across time, how to create a universe in the same way we create a video game. They know it all. It's too easy. It's just code to them. But when you know it all, you're faced with the masculine aspect of God's conundrum. You're omniscient. You see it all. 
There's no more fun illusions. All you want is to not know everything so you can have the wonder and fun and the mystery of presence, awe. And that's what they accidentally gave up. They're experiencing a deep degree of imbalance. Their heads are out of balance with their hearts. On this planet, many different timelines happen simultaneously. Make different choices and you experience different timelines. It's all real and it's all happening at the same time. Love you.